Hallelujah. Okay, beloved, it took long enough, but the phone is already charged. Um, I think I have like a good two hours on it, so it should be good. Um, let's continue. What are we looking at? This is something simple, you know. People say this is something so simple. If God is for us, then who can be against us? Um, but he's led us into um, examining things, right? So I'm looking for, where's my scripture page again? We'll just get my scripture page. Jesus. All right, let's just use this for now. No, I have to find my scripture page, okay. I have so many tabs open. Um, so we're looking at Gideon. There we go. Found it? I uh, lost it. Oh, there we go. We're looking at Gideon. How Gideon chose the men, okay? Remember, Abba says, I chose you. You didn't choose me. And um, he was explaining to Gideon, we'll find it right now, where um, the men that Gideon had was too many. So if they won the battle like that, people would say, well, you know, m men did it. It wasn't God. So... Um, There's no taking my the cross. Okay, Judges 7. No regret in what it costs. God of Okay, then Jeroboam. Do we need to read this again? Or. Okay, let's read it. Um, Judges 7. Then Jeroboam. That is Gideon. And all the people who were with him got up early. And camped beside the spring of Harod. Just a second, okay? Something strange is going on with my phones. Let there be Hey. Okay. Right. So Gideon. That scent is so strong, I can't even. Somebody's painting or something or sticking something. I hope I don't faint away here. Because <laughs> I could barely breathe with it. Judges 7. Then Jeroboam, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him got up early and camped beside the spring of Harod, and the camp of Midian all was north of them by the hill of Moriah in the valley. Then the Lord said to Gideon, There are too many people with you for me to hand over Midian over to them. Otherwise Israel will boast about themselves against me, saying, My own power has rescued me. So now proclaim in the hearing of the people, whoever is afraid and trembling, let him turn back and leave Mount Gilead. Gilead. Gil Gilead. So 22,000 men returned home. But 10,000 10, remained. Then the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many people. I think this is a little bit too loud, right? This is the day of the Lord. Okay, hallelujah. Where are we? Oh, okay, right. So, twenty from 22,000, it went down to 10,000. Um, 22,000 men returned home, but 10,000 remained. And the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many people. Bring them down to the water, that I will test them for you there. Therefore, it shall be that he... Of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you, he shall go with you. But everyone whom I say to you, this one shall not go with you, he shall not go with you. But everyone... Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so he brought the people down to the water and the Lord said to Gideon, 
You shall separate everyone who laps the water with his tongue as a dog laps, as well as everyone who kneels down to drink. Now the number of those who lapped the water, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest, all the rest of people knelt down to drink water. God knows, is he knows who he's called, okay? And the Lord told Gideon, with 300 men who lapped, I will rescue you and will hand over the Midianites to you. Let the other people go, each man to his home. So they went. So the 300 men took people's provision for the journey and their trumpets made of ram's horns in their hands. And, the, and Gideon sent away the other men of Israel, each to his tent, but kept 300 men. The camp of Midian was below him in the valley. Now on the same night, the Lord said to Gideon, Arise, go down against their camp, for I have given it into your hand. But if you are afraid to go down by yourself, go at Pura, your servant, down to the camp, and you will hear what they'll say. And afterward, you will have the courage to go down against the camp. Then he went down, Pura's servant, to the outpost of the army that was in the camp, and now the Midianites and the Alma the Amak <laughs> me and these lovely pronunciations Amalekites and all the sons of the east were laying camped in the valley as countless as locusts and they only have how much 300 men okay and their camels were without numbers numerous as a sand on a seashore wow when Gideon arrived there was a man telling a dream to his friend and he said listen carefully I had a dream. There was a loaf of barley bread tumbling into the camp of the Midian, and it came to the tent. Where is that? Okay. And it came to the tent and struck it so that it fell. And it turned it upside down so that the tent, so that the tent lay flat and his friend replied this dream is nothing less than the sword of Gideon the son of Joaf Joash Joash a man of Israel God has given Midian and the entire camp into his hand when Gideon heard the amount of the dream and its interpretation he bowed down in worship he returned to the camp of Israel and said arise for the Lord has given the camp of Midian into your hand and he divided the 300 men into the into three companies and he put trumpets and empty pitchers into the hands of all of them with torches inside the pitchers and he said to them look at me then do as I do and when I come to the edge of the camp just do as I do when I and all who are with me blow the trumpet, ram's horn, then all around the camp, you also blow the, the trumpets and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. All right. So God says, if I'm for you, who can be against you? Um, it goes on to say that they, they made them think that they had more than, more than, more than their army was, okay? And um, should we read it out? Should we read it? The plan of um, what God, what God, um, okay, let's just read it out. It's just four more verses. So Gideon, the hundred men who were with him, came to the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch when the guards had just been changed. And they blew the trumpets and they smashed the pitchers that were in their hands. When three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers, they held the torches in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow. And they shouted, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. And each stood in his place and they fled. Each stood in their place around the camp and the entire Midianite army ran, crying out as they, they ran, they fled. When Gideon's men blew three trumpets, 
And the Lord set the sword of one Midianite, another even throughout the whole army, and the army fled as far as Beth Shita towards Zaria, and as far as the border of Abel Meholah by Tabah. And the men of Israel were summoned together from the tribes of Naphtali, Asher, and Manasseh, and they pursued Midian. So God, God gave the camps of the Midianites into Gideon's hands. See, just like that. Um, okay, so if God is for you, then who can be against you? So the Midianites were looking at. We're looking at number, a countless number of um, adversaries against them, right? And they just go up with 300 men. And But God gave instruction. God showed Gideon what to do, when to do it. And Gideon followed. And the men that he chose, guess what? The men that God chose to go with him, even though they were um, small in number, they were very obedient to God. They knew that they had to follow Gideon to win the battle. So, so said, so done, right? Um, the other one he was looking at, just a second, okay? Right. Well, we did this one yesterday with Daniel. When Daniel learned that the decree had been passed, he learned that the decree had been passed. He still knelt down. He opened his window and he prayed three times, three times a day. And um, the decree went out against him to throw him into the lion's den. And did he stop? No. Daniel persevered, right? Daniel went on. He was fearless. If God is for you, then who can be against you? The Bible says, They who revere the Lord, the Son of Righteousness, will rise with healing in his wings. The Bible says, Wait upon the Lord. Um... Wait, I say. Let's find that right now. Isaiah. I don't know. Isaiah 40. Okay, we're reading from verse 30. To 33. Lead us home. Even the youth, Isaiah 40, verse 30 to 30, not 31. That's all they have, huh? Alright, give me 29. Oh, sorry. This fan puts me to sleep. Okay. Isaiah 40, reading from verse 29 to 31. He gave power. He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, no strength, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Well, that was something else, but okay, we're looking at... Wait, I say, wait on the Lord. That's what I hear. Psalms 27, reading from verse... Hey. 13 to 15. But there is no 15. Okay. Reading from verse 12 to 14. Are you ready? If God is for us, then who could be against us? 
Deliver me not over to the will of my enemies, for false witness has risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty, cruelty. I had fainted, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Again, the heart. Wait on the Lord, I say. And he says, be still and know that I am. Since Psalms 27 doesn't have another verse after that, we're going to go to 28 and read the verses there. Because it continues. Let's go. Psalms 28, reading from verse 1 to 3. Unto thee I will cry. O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me. Least if thou be silent to me, I become like them, them who go down to the pits. Hear the voice of my supplication. When I, when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands towards thy holy oracle, draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. If God is for you, then who could be against you? Okay? So even your, your you know, your families, your friends, your, man, the people closest to you are going to be your enemies. We know that people who smile with us, they don't always wish us well. But God knows the heart and he knows what's in their thoughts. And God loves you too, brother. Um... God knows the heart and he knows the mind of all of us. And if your enemies are in the midst of you, he's for you. He says, I am, I'll, work, I'll work all things for the good of those who love me. Let's find that too, okay? Okay. Oh no. Okay, Romans... 8 reading from verse 27 and it says and he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God and we know all things work together for the good to for the good to them that love God. See, he just confirmed what I just said there. Um, to them who are called, to them who are the called to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren you see he says he searches remember i was just saying god god knows the heart and he knows the mind so it doesn't matter who is around you or who is coming up against you if god is for you then who could be against you okay he already knows their thoughts and he's already made a way of escape let's find that Go. Okay, 1 Corinthians 10, reading from verse 12 to 14. So the one who thinks he's standing firm should be careful not to fall. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide an escape so you can stand up under it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. He's, he's talking about, um, he said, hey, every time something comes up against you, I won't, I won't give you more than you can bear. Okay, I will, I won't permit Satan to harm you. I won't 
I won't give Satan um, the upper hand over you because I love you. And he says, hey, I've already provided a way of escape, but I want you to find it. So we're reading. How do we get there? I don't know how we. Okay, we're reading. Be still and know that I am. I can't see a thing, so I need to close this off a little bit. Okay, there we go. And in Psalms 46, reading from verse 9 to 11, he makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks bow. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots with fire. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Selah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. If God is for us, then who could be against us? God, why would God be for us? Because we trust in him. You know, the Bible says, trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. When we trust in God, we know that he is sovereign. He is above all things. He has already, he's already, he has a plan from beginning to end. So he already knows what's coming, what's in the end, what's in the beginning. And he's leading us in his way that he knows is best for us. So God is saying, hey, do you trust me? Trust in me. Um, if I'm for you, then who could be against you? He says, Israel, do not fear. I am for you. Who can be against you? The nations will rise against nation, and they'll gather. They'll gather around. They'll gather around you to bring you down. He said, "I will not make a complete end of you, but I will chastise you that you come back to me." Let's find. I will not. How are you? Huh? I was here since morning, actually. Wow. Yeah, so I can leave at least by five. I Well, Pastor, not here, so. Oh, you come? Uh -uh. Wow. I will not make a complete end. How are you feeling today? Good. You feeling good? Good. You went down yesterday? Yeah, well, I got soaked. <laughs> you got soaked in the rain? My juice, you got soaked. Yeah. Oh, no. Since I ran off, off and then the, I revived them to the floor the box. I like to hear Pastor Figaro preach. He's he's really good. Yeah, he's powerful. Yes, he is. He's a Bible man. Yeah. But the rest I don't know. He's the backup pastor in the world. He's really good. Jeremiah five, reading from verse seventeen to nineteen. They will devour the harvest and your food. They will devour your sons and your daughters. They'll devour your flocks and your herds. This sounds like Job, doesn't it? They will devour your vines and your fig trees. They will demolish with the sword your fortified cities in which you trust. Yet, even in those days, declares the Lord, I will not make a complete, I will not make you a complete destruction. I'll not make a complete end of you. Well, this one has, I will not make you a complete destruction. We'll go into King James Version just now. It shall come about when they say, why has the Lord our God done these things to us? Then you shall say to them, As you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your and served foreign gods in your land, so so you will serve strangers in a land that is not your own. Ouch. That's a big boo-boo. Okay, let's go into King James verse 18 of Jeremiah 5 because I heard you will not, I will not make a complete end of you okay there we go in the King James Version and they shall eat up your harvest and your bread which your sons and daughters should eat and they should eat up your flocks and your herds and they'll eat up they shall eat up your vines and your fig trees they shall impoverish thy fenced cities Wherein you trusted with the sword. Nevertheless, in those days, says the Lord, I will not make a full end with you, and it shall come to pass when ye shall say, Wherefore? 
Wherefore does the Lord God all these things unto us? You shall answer them, like you have forsaken me, the Lord, and serve strange gods in your land. So shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. Ouch. Talk about rebuke. If God is for you, then who could be against you, okay? Hallelujah, Father. Um, let's go to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So where are you? Are you back by your sister or are you, you going back home? Huh? You back by your sister or you going back home? At home. You're home? Where by her? Yeah. Veronica? No, only. Oh, that's what I meant. <laughs> you don't want to go there at all? Yeah, she a uh, fish shop. Huh? I, I want to get my cool dress in too. I would have to get my cool dress in. You got to get your clothes from there. Yeah. So bye bye. Bye this affair. So we go on. We can talk to me. We go on. Tell me to come back for you again. Mm. Yeah. Do this and stuff. See, thanks for having me, but yeah. um, God says I have to leave now. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Take your things and leave. Yeah. And I do kind of this. All right. So we're reading Daniel 3, 19 to 25. We go back to Nebuchadnezzar. Never Nebuchadnezzar. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage visage was changed against his his uh, he's angry, you know, it changed. He's no longer looking at them like, oh smiley smiley now. Against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was normally to be heated. And then he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Oh. You could put on the other light, you know, if you want, if you think it's too dark. No. But it's warm. That's why I just, yeah, well. All right, so he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why his most mighty? Hmm, isn't that strange? They appeared to him like strong men, right? And cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. And these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their own other garments and will cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flames of the fire, it killed those men or it slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Wow. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace if god is for you who can be against you he says i'll walk with you through the fire and when you go through the waters i'll be with you we'll find out just now okay um where okay verse 24 then nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and he said unto his counselors did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire and they answered and said unto the king true o king and he answered and said lo i see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is as the son of god hallelujah glory hallelujah So who 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 himself <laughs> who who himself came there to rescue them? Jesus himself. Okay, and it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, 
Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of the fire. The princes and governors and captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was any hair on their head burnt, neither were their coats changed, or the smell of fire had passed on them. Hallelujah. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted him, and have changed the king's word and yield their bodies that they might not serve or worship any other god except their own god and guess what happened there he made a decree hallelujah in verse 29 therefore i make a decree this is what boldness this is what courage this is what love for the lord this is what stepping out on a limb for god will do it will bring kings and nation listen therefore i make a decree that every people nation and language that speak anything amiss the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces and their house shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Hallelujah, Father. And then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. So these men of God begin to reign. See how mighty God is? He is mighty. Somebody say he's mighty. He is almighty. Um, when, when you go through the waters, I hear take up the sword of the spirit. We're going to read sword of the spirit. Isaiah 43, reading from verse 1 to 3, yeah? But now, thus says the Lord, your Creator, O Jacob, and He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you walk through the and oh when i'll be with you and through the rivers they will not overflow you and when you walk through the fire you will not be scorched nor will the flame burn you how many believe that if we got thrown into fire jesus would come and cover us that not a hair on our heads would be touched for i am the lord your god the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I've given Egypt as your ransom and Cush and Seba in your place. See, God is doing the good thing. He's fighting for his people. He's the one. He's the shield. Amen. He's our refuge, our fortress, our safe place. But do you know what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said before they were tossed in the flames? I'll find it for you told me to read that for you okay our God is able to deliver us but if not still we will not serve another okay so Daniel 3 <clears throat> reading from verse uh, Um, reading from verse, let's read from verse 14. So King, ne King, <laughs> King Nebuchadnezzar responded and said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and worship the golden image that I've set up? Now, if you are ready at the moment... You hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the lair, the trigon, the psaltery, 
the bagpipe and all kinds of music to fall down and worship the image that I've made very well. They've been giving a choice, life or death, worship or die. And then he said, but if you do not worship, you'll be immediately cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there that can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. Wow, they're standing in serious faith. Amen. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will deliver us out of your hand. O king, then they're very, very polite too. They're not like, but even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image you've set up. Now somewhere in the Bible, it speaks of rich and small, poor, um, rich, and, rich and poor, small and great, slave and bond, being forced to worship the beast, okay? I hear um, we're going to have to go here. They who did not worship the beast were beheaded. Okay, Revelations 20, reading from verse, maybe two. Ooh. Reading from verse three. Okay, reading from verse three to five. And he threw him into the abyss and shut it and sealed it over him. Who? The dragon, Satan, yes, hallelujah, that's your fate, devil. So that he could not deceive the nations until the thousand years were complete, will reign with Jesus a thousand years. After that, he must be released for a brief period of time. And then I saw the thrones, and those seated on them had been given authority to judge. Remember, he says, don't you know? That the saints of God will judge even angels. Don't you know that the saints shall judge angels? And he said, Then I saw the thrones and those seated on them have been given authority to judge. And he, I saw the souls of those who have been beheaded for their testimony of Jesus and for the word of God and those who had not worshipped the beast or his image or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or hands and they came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years the rest of the dead did not come back to life until the thousand years were complete and this is the first resurrection So much for that. But do we need to go over that? Did that really register to you? This is the first resurrection. The first resurrection of the dead. Um, there's another one. Wait. There's another one with the image of the beast earlier. We're looking earlier in Revelations, okay? Here we go. Revelations 14, reading from verse 8 onwards, okay? Then a second angel followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great, who has made the Gentiles to drink the wine of the passion of her immorality. A third angel followed them, calling 
in a loud voice. Do you see how this happens? The Gentile becomes a Jew and the Jew becomes a Gentile? It's all about belief. Yeah? That's what it this separates. Belief. Faith. A third angel followed them, calling in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on his forehead or hand, he too will drink of the wine of God's anger, poured undiluted into the cup of his wrath, and he will be tormented in fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the Lamb. That don't sound good. Don't take the mark of the beast. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever, day and night. There will be no rest for those who worship the beast and its image or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. Let's go to the King James Version for this. Let's read the first two verses before this. And it says, and another, I saw another angel fly into the midst of heaven. I fly, fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him that made heaven and earth and the seas and the fountains of water. And there, and there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city, because she made the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receives his mark in his forehead, or on his head, are you getting breeze? No? Yeah? Yeah, I like it and I like it. You want more? Because I'm kind of falling asleep for this thing. Better? Okay, so... Where am I? Okay. The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his, Im and his image and receives his mark on his forehead, or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out with a mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb come on da and the smoke of their torment ascend up forever and ever and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus because if God is for you then who could be against you man it doesn't matter if the devil himself comes against you once you are doing all you can do to stand and you stand by the word of your testimony in Jesus, exalting him, lifting him up, man, there's nothing to fear. Here's what they say, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, bright, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yea, says the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. I'm trying not to fall asleep here, guys. Okay. If God is for you, who can be against you? So the blessing, remember when Esau um, sold the blessing to Jacob, and then Jacob received Isaac, and Isaac blessed him, and I, um, Jacob was running, and um, the angel of the Lord came, and Jacob wrestled with the Lord. Hmm. Oh, Holy Spirit, living God, strengthen my body. Right, so the, the, um, 
Esau was pursuing Jacob, but guess what? Jacob already had the blessing. Um, who won? Who prevailed? Jacob. Because Jacob's name turned to Israel. And he's known as the God of Israel. Okay? That's who the promise is given. Um, if God is for you, who can be against you? All right. Remember David with Goliath? You uncircumcised Philistine! I hear that in spirit. <laughs> okay. First Samuel 17. So they were giants. The Nephilim and they are on the earth now and you better believe that they are hiding in places that are removed the the angels went into women and they mated with them they pregnated them and when the babies were born they were born giants right the Nephilim so the giants were on the earth and the Philistines had them right so David was the one selected, but David was tiny. David was the youngest, but David was anointed. God loves a peacemaker. He loves um, those who keep the flock. Okay? Um, you see, like, what do you call him? Um, Jacob? What did Jacob do? And what did Esau do? Esau was the hunter. What did Jacob do? Was Jacob a shepherd? Jacob was, was, just now, let's find it. Esau was, <sighs> Isaac loved Esau because he was a hunter. Bringing home the, the game. And Rebecca loved Jacob. Genesis 25, is it? Yes. Okay. Okay, let's see what Jacob was, just for a second here. Right, so it didn't say what Jacob did, but he was a peaceful man living in tents. He always, you know, he was at peace, and Isa, um, Esau was the hunter. Um, with David... We're going to see what David did here to Samson. All right. We're reading 1 Samuel 17, 26. Remember when the prophet came and blessed David? All right. The men of Israel. Shall we read that? God looks at the heart. Oh, Holy Spirit. 1 Samuel 16, reading from verse 6 to 8. When they had entered, they looked at Elab, Elab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his satchel, because I have rejected him. For God sees not as man sees. For man looks at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. And he brought all his sons, see? Next, Jesse made Shammah pass by and he said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Next, who passed by after Shamo? I don't know. Then, thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass by Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. Is there anyone else?
And Samuel said to Jesse, Are these all children? He said, These dairy means yet the youngest, and behold, he's tending the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. I need some kind of sugar or something. <laughs> I'm falling asleep. 347. Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. But we will not sit down until he's here. Oh, maybe an almond too. <laughs> See how that works? My eyes are just open again. Hmm. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, but with beautiful eyes and a handsome appearance. The Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. And then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David. From that they followed. And Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Mm. Now the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Departed from Saul. And an evil spirit of the, from the Lord terrorized him. Saul's servants. Then said to him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God is terrorizing you. God knows who he's chosen and he knows the purpose for who, what he chose it for, right? So why now? Saul has to send for a soother. Let your Lord, let your Lord now command your servants who are before you. Let them seek a man. who is a skillful player on the harp and it shall come about when the evil spirit from God is on you he shall play the harp with his hand and you will be well amen all right I need some of this now I am so warm I'm falling asleep mm -hmm. I have to put that on but that one's long nah, nah, good. Nah, good. <laughs> things like a tractor. Again? Okay. So, where are we? Um, okay, so he's telling him, you see, God purposed it. It's like, hey, a king, a king, an evil spirit go goes on Saul, and now Saul needs a soother. And this is how David, he's preparing David for promotion. David is the quiet shepherd. So Saul said to his servants, Provide for me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. And then one of the young men said, Behold, I've seen a son of Jesse, a Bethlehemite, who is a skillful musician. He's from where? The house of the Lord, Beth. A mighty man of valor, a warrior, one prudent in speech, and a handsome man. And the Lord is with him. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the flock of sheep. Oh, Holy Spirit. And Jesse took the donkey, loaded with bread and a jug of wine and a young goat, and sent them to Saul by David, his son. See? So, David was selected even though he didn't have the appearance or the, you know, the posture or whatever that they were looking for. Um, that men thought that they needed. But the Lord looks at the heart. He does not look at the outer. So... David then came to Saul and attended to him. And Saul loved David, and he became his armor bearer. 
Okay, now let's skip into First Sam First Samuel seventeen twenty six. The men of Israel said, "Have you seen this man who's coming up? Surely he's coming up to defy Israel, and it will be that the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches, and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel." And then David spoke to the men who were standing by him, saying. What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should taunt the armies of the living God? The people answered him in accord with these words, saying, Thus it will be done for the man who kills yeah. him. Whoever can take down Goliath. And now Ela. Elab, Elab, yeah, Elab, 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 Eliab, Eliab. That's better, right? Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger burned against David, and he said, "Why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your insolence and the wickedness of your heart." For you've come down in order to see the battle. But David said, What have I done now? Was it just a question? But God has anointed, and what God says, Touch not my anointed, right? And do my prophets no harm. And he says, Where I place my anointed, no man will remove. I turned, um, th that's what he told me, that's what he said to me. Um, then he turned away from when he anointed me for ministry that's what he said to me then he turned away from him to another and said the same thing and the people answered the same thing like before you just came to see the battle how evil of you to leave the flock um, when the words which David spoke were heard put your head down and just rest a little bit Put your head down and just close your eyes a little bit. When the words which David spoke were heard, he told them to Saul, and he sent for him. David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail on the account of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Ah, see how brave he is? All the men are Who's going to fight this Philistine? And David says, I'll go. And then Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are but a youth. While he's been a warrior from his youth. Ay, ay, ay. God knows his own. Amen. God used the weak. He doesn't use the strong. He uses the weak. Why? That his strength might be seen. It's not by might. No, by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Okay, so we see in verse 34. Your servant was tending his father's sheep when a lion, on a, when a lion on a or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock. Guess what? I went out after him. And I attacked him, and I rescued it from his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I seized him by the beard, or by the mane, the lion's mane. And I struck him and I killed him. David has the heart of a lion, even though he has the posture of a child or a youth, right? Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them since he's taunted the armies of the living god if god is for you then who can be against you god says touch not my anointed god says um what does he say about israel concerning israel i will bring down the armies of Is the the enemies of israel I'll bring down the enemies of my people. There we go. Psalms 68. 
um, 22. I'm looking for Psalm 60 at 22 right now. Holy Spirit, living God, Father God, we bless you. We bless you. We adore you. We worship you, Lord God. Oh, you are Lord in this place. Thank you, Father. All right. So God says, God is to us a God of deliverances. And to God, the Lord, belongs escape from death. Surely, God will shatter the head of his enemies, the hairy crown of him who goes on his guilty deeds. And the Lord said, I will bring them back from Bashan. I'll bring them back from the depths of the sea. God promises to del deliver. Um, that your foot may shatter them in blood and the tongue of your dogs may have its, its portion from your enemies. All right. I will bless those who bless Israel and I will curse those who curse Israel. In Genesis 12, reading from verse 2 to 4. I'll make you a great nation, and I'll also bless you, and I'll make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, hallelujah, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all families of the earth will be blessed. So Abram went forth as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Now, Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. See, God promises. Like his army will never fail. God's army will never fail, okay? And God's eyes are upon Israel. Not just the Israel, the land, and the people there, but Israel, spiritual Israel. So, we're going to see here now that he's making a, a firm statement. Okay, and it says, well, David saying, hey, he killed the, the, the lion and the bear, and the Philistine's going to be just like one of them. He's going to take them out. He's going to take him out. And David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. David is establishing it right now. He's saying, hey, God is my protection, my shield, my refuge, my fortress. In him I will trust. And Saul, the oh, the, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from this hand of the Philistine, the, the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. And then Saul clothed David with his garments and put on a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with armor. He got the king. He got the king's armor. King has the best, right? David girded his sword over his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. So David said to Saul, "I cannot go with all of these, for I have not tested them." And David took them off. Why? Somebody say his armor was the armor of Christ. And he took his stick in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag which he had Even ah i hate when that happens somebody's calling me on whatsapp so listen he took his stick in his hand and chose for himself five smooth stones look five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag, which he had, even his pouch and his sling that was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. Why five? 
Goliath had four more brothers. <laughs> Just a second, okay? You are interrupting my study, and I don't like that one bit. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I just am trying to just cut it off, okay? Okay, so he took in his hand, he took a stick in his hand, a stick and chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and he put them in his shepherd's bag which he had even in his pouch and his sling was in his hand and he approached the Philistine this is fine not by my hi how are you hi how are you guys? Uh, I remember Abigail, Shania, and uh, I don't know. Shanice. Shanice. Oh, you guys remembered me. Oh, that's really nice. This is Stephanie sleeping. I have company. Well, I'm doing a study again. <laughs> Just say hi. Hi. Tell them, say Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. <laughs> I mean you, but okay, wait. Alright, so, um, how can I help you guys? Tell me what happened to your dad. Did he get better? No? He didn't get better? He got a little better? So he's still sick? With what, the cold? That's really going around, isn't it? I had it. I got it for like a month. A cough that will not go away. But what is it that he has? The cough? Yeah, it's a cough. Oh, well. How's school? Good. It's good? Yeah? You guys are shining. You're glowing. <laughs> is there anything I can do for you? Anything I can pray for you about? Anything at all? No? Special prayer? Anybody? No? So you just as fast to say hi. So Shanice, Abigail, and Shania. Shanice, Shania, Abigail. Ah, there you go. And my name? <laughs> Do you forget my name? Yeah. It's Carrie. Wait, the boys are coming? Um, Omarion? Yeah. What's the other ones? Yeah. Yeah. A Bible name. Elijah and somebody else. Amari. Oh, and Amari. it was just two boys? Yeah. Oh. They're looking for you guys. I don't think you can hide. <laughs> Hi. Omarion, right? Right. And Elijah. Oh my God. Wow. Oh my God. Hi. So Omarion, Elijah, who's who? Kenja. Kenja. Alicia. 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 Okay, guys. I have a full class. A full class of kids. Say hi. hi. This is to the world. This is videotaping to the world right now. Where do you go? Come back here. <laughs> it's okay. We're doing a study on David and Goliath. We're looking at the big giant that stood before David. And um, the people were looking at him like, who's this small boy that's going up before this big thing? And he says, "I, you come at me with weapons of war, but I come at you in the name of the living God. And we know how that ended, right? Goliath fell, right? What's your name? Hmm? You're Elijah. And he's new. Yeah. Yeah. Alexi. Nixie. 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 Oh, Lexi. I'm sorry, Lexi. Lexi? Lexine. 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 Yeah. 
Can I call you Lex Luto? It's okay, Lexine. It's Mikel. 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 Oh, okay. We'll meet Stefan, and um, I thank you very much for coming to see me. Okay, God bless you. <laughs> She's so precious. She's glowing. You, you three are, <laughs> you three are glowing. One, two, three. Sweating. Even Elijah. Well, yeah, I think that's sweat on Elijah's forehead. <laughs> are you guys being? Are you guys being good? Yes. Are you being the light that you are? Yes, yes. It's shining bright everywhere. Yes. So you guys just came up to the. You don't come up to the market at this hour late, right? Okay, because that's not good. Because up here has some crazy people. Yeah. Yeah, that's why he's here with me right now. He has to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he left his bag on the side. He'll... Yeah. Yeah. They're not. They're. They're not. They're not really right upstairs in the head. So bye. Bye. Okay. So. So they just passed to say hi. Remember that class? Remember when we were studying and I prayed with them? Okay. They brought some more. Um. Jesus said the child, um, heaven belongs to the children. Amen. So, um, okay, so what was I? Right, so David. David and Goliath. David is going up to Goliath. So, <clears throat> he took his stick in his hand and chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bar, cool and collective. And then, his sling in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. And then the Philistine came on and approached David. With the shield bear in front of him. Oh, he's the big bad one, okay? And what happened? I didn't know why Pastor doesn't want to put on that. The curtains on stuff, man. But anyway, because a lot of people can see me through, you know? When they won't know that I'm here. Now mm -hmm. they know that I'm here, but maybe this weekend he'll put it up. I don't know. Um. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him. He laughed at him. Ah, they sent me a child. What is, what is a child going to do with me? But he was a youth. He was probably like about maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe in his teens, yeah? And Goliath is this big, big, bad, whatever looking thing. Um, so he was a root and he was ruddy. But he was handsome with a handsome appearance. They keep mentioning that he was very handsome. And um, 1 Samuel 17, reading from verse 43. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Cursed David by his dogs, his his gods, his gods, and the Philistine also said to David, "Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the field." I could see David all now. He's he's just collective and calm, and now he begins to speak in the spirit. He begins to rattle some tongues. Amen. <laughs> And David said unto the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. So he let him have his say, and now he's speaking. This day the Lord will deliver you up into my hands and I will strike you down and I will remove your head from you and I will give the dead bodies of the armies of the Philistine this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Hallelujah. Where does all the glory go? To God. Hallelujah. Yes. So God says, if I am for you, then who can be against you? David is standing up before this giant. And that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by sword or spear. For the battle is the Lord's 
and he will give you into our hands. Can we find not by might? No, by not by might. You got enough? <laughs> Kids, they, yeah, they just, they, I adore them. <laughs> you could go ahead, go back to sleep if you want. Yeah, you good. Hmm? Good. You're good? You're napped and woke up. Okay, and Zachariah, I hear him saying in the spirit, so let's follow. As he leads, we follow. Zechariah 4, verse 5 to 7. So the angel was speaking with me and answered, said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. And he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zabruel. Zab. <laughs> Oh no, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, 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 saying not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What are you? Hi, Robert. How are you? You good? God is good? All the time. Here's what he says, not by might, or by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts, what are you, great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Zerubbabel, you will become a plain, and he will bring forth the top stone with shouts of grace, grace unto it. And I hear him saying, valleys, um, uh, the path will be prepared for the return of the Lord. Valleys, valleys straightened and mountains made low. Oh, Holy Spirit, let your work on earth be done. Rekamba rakashanda, rakamba shanda, rakamba shanda. Ah, Isaiah 40, reading from verse 3 to 5. There's a voice calling. Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord, and make his smooth, make smooth in the desert a highway for the for our God. What? Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain brought low, and let the rough ground become a plain and a rugged terrain a broad valley. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Hallelujah. Going back to David. But first, I hear him saying, the first will be last and the last first. Those whom you didn't expect will be used. They will be used. And those who you expect, huh? We could share it. <laughs> Go ahead, you can have half. Um, so he's saying, listen, he's saying, um, what was I saying just now? What was I saying just now, Stefan? Four. Hmm? You four. No. Um, just now. Uh, just now, I'm going to get it back. I'm going to get it back. I'm going to get it back. All right. He's saying, not by might, no by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Um, before we went back into David, I was going to go to something. I know I mentioned it, so just go and find that Bible scripture right now. I can't remember for the love of me right now. Um, oh, the many shall be the the first shall be last and the last first. Those who you expect not to be to expect to be used will not be used, and those who you those who you expect to be used will not be used, and those who you don't expect to be used will be used. Okay. God is doing, he said, behold, I'm doing a new thing. The humble shall be exalted, and the exalted humbled. Amen? Um, all right, so David comes and he says in 1 Samuel 17, this day, verse 46, this day the Lord will deliver you up in my hands. Dude, Stefan, just empty this in the, um, when he falls off. Be right there. Look at my name. But when you peel it, yeah, just... Give me the, um, plate. 
Okay. So, um, right. So David's saying, this day the Lord will deliver, will deliver you up in my hands and I will strike you down and remove your head from you. And I will give the dead bodies of the armies of the Philistine to, to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth. And all the earth will know that there's a God in Israel. And all this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by sword or spear. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. Tell somebody the word of the Lord will accomplish what it's sent to do. Amen. That's all he needed to say. And here's what he says. Then it happened that the Philistine rose and came and drew near to meet David. And David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand into his bag and he took out from it a stone and slung it. Here. And slung it. And struck the Philistine on his forehead and the stone sank into his forehead so that he fell on his face. Oh, go ahead, you can have more. Here. And the stone, the stone sank into his forehead. That's how hard he meant business when he was at war. See, and he fell on his face to the ground. Now it took courage to do that, right? Who would have think? Who would have think? Man, they thought they needed a whole army to pull down this giant. Thus David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and he struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in David's hand. You know where the sword was? In his mouth. Coming on the clouds with fire, the whole earth shakes. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And the Philistines saw that their champion was dead. They ran for the hills. <laughs> they ran. They, they fled. And the men... What are you doing? And the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted, no, 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 no. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Ew. Ew. And the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines as far as the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the slain Philistines laid all along the way from Sharaim, Shara Sharaim, even to Gath and to Ekron. Goliath is done for. Remember, God says, um, I hear him saying in the spirit, you must bind up the strong man and plunder his house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To plunder his house, bind up the strong man. Mm. Hmm? You gotta go somewhere? Oh, I think I knew about it, but I don't know too, right? All right, in Mark 3, reading from verse 26, If Satan is divided and rises against himself, he cannot stand. His end has come. Indeed, no one can enter a strong man's house to steal his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Truly, I tell you, the sons of men will be forgiven all sins and blasphemies as they, as many as they utter, but. Make it clean. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. He's guilty of eternal sin. God's Spirit is the Holy Spirit. 
That is who God accomplishes all his work. That is where, how God accomplishes all his work. By his spirit, says the Lord. Amen. We just read it. Oh, they're still there. People are still here. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So God is saying, listen, if I'm for you, who can be against you? No one. Okay? No one. He already gave us the power through the blood of the Lamb. And He gave us His love. He showed us His love on Calvary's cross. That alone. Not that alone that He defeated the grave and hell for us. We know that in Him there's power to destroy both the soul and the body. He, in His, his hands, time has no, no charge. Man, He can stop if He wants. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The elements bow down to God. They bow down. The winds obey Him. The seas obey Him. The sun obey Him. The, the sky is going to be rolled up like a scroll. The moon. Everything obeys God. So what have we to fear? The only thing we have to fear is Him. We have to revere Him. Amen? I think I milked this one enough. Let's go to the other scripture now. Hosanna in the highest. My throat is so dry right now. Oh. Deraka baraka shandarare. And we're in. It's 423 here. Yeah, fine, I see the King of Glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes. The whole earth shakes. Sit down, sit down. His love and mercy washing over all our sins. The people see. You want to go? Oh, you could go if you want. I'm going on, I'm finished this thing. But I won't be leaving late. Hosanna in the highest. If I raise it, they're gonna cut me. Okay, so the next scripture that we have is I will wipe away every tear from their eye. If God is for you, then who can stand against you? It's Him we have eternal life. It's Him we're coming into the new city with. It's Him who's bringing us into heaven. It's He who said, I go away to prepare a place for you, and I'm coming back for you. I will not leave you orphans, but I will come for you. I will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Every fire stirring as we pray and see, we're on our knees. Then I will wipe away Hosanna Revelation 21 4 Reading from verse 3 to 5 A baptism came out of the song. Natasha, remember? Your baptism came out of the song when I was worshiping in the car. And God says, come out. 
come out and minister to those people inside our rituals. And I was like, if you bring out two people, if you bring out some people, but there's so many people in there. And he brought you and that other girl out and she got spooked out. But you received Christ. Hallelujah. Everything I had for your kingdom scores. Okay, Revelation 21, reading from verse 3 to 5. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man, and he will live with them, and they will be his people. And he, God himself, will be with them as, his, as their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the former things have passed away. And the one seated on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said, Write this down, for these are the words. These words are faithful and true. He said he's not slow or slack concerning his promise. He will surely accomplish it. Remember he said, um, what was he saying just, um, he said that, um, no eye have seen, no ears have heard. Let's go there. Okay, 1 Corinthians 2, reading from verse 8 to 10. Hosanna in the highest. Okay, 1 Corinthians 2, reading from verse 8. None, none of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Rather, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ears have heard, nor has heart imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed it to us by the Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Can we go into the King James Version for this one? I wonder how I'm feeling a little bit so tired today, you know, a little bit so tired, <laughs> a little tired, a little bit drained. I think I know why. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, ears has not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those that love him. That's better. For God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For his spirit search all things. Ew, Stefan, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man? <laughs> Are you done? You have to eat the whole thing. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knows no man but the Spirit of God. So if you have the Spirit of God, then you know what He's prepared. You have an idea, you know? He's revealed it. Father. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us, of God which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches but which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual amen and we read in verse 14 a little bit more but the natural man receives things receive not things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness unto him Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yea, he himself is judge of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen? 
We're going into Isaiah. Twenty-five. No sadness, yeah? Isaiah 25, reading from verse 7. And on this mountain he will swallow up the covering, which is over all people. Go through it in a bin somewhere. On this mountain he will swallow up the covering, which is over all peoples. Which is over all peoples. <laughs> wow. Even the veil which is stretched over all nations. He will swallow up death for all time, Father. And the Lord God will wipe tears away from all faces. And he will remove the reproach of his people from all the earth. I hear him saying, I will make them bow to you. I hear him saying, a man will take a hold of your garment. Let us go with you, for the Lord is with you. Uh, right now, that's why we're calling people to repentance. We're calling them to flee from sin, run away. Man, come into the cross, come under the cross of Calvary and be washed and be Holy Spirit filled. Right, and he will remove the reproach of his people from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. So let's just read what we just heard here. Revelation 3, verse 9, reading from verse 8 to 10. When I see that cross, I see freedom. And from death to life. Okay, Revelation 3, verse 8. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door, which no one can shut. For you have only little strength. Yea, you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Look at those who belong to the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, but are liars instead. I will make them come and bow down at your feet, and they will know that I love you, because you've kept my command to endure with patience, and I will keep you from the hour of testing that is about to come upon the whole earth, the whole world, to test those who dwell on you the world on the earth I see a 43 and grace to grace when I see the cross I see freedom And from death to life, I will sing you praise. All right, and um, wait, what was the thing I was reading? Okay, and we're reading back in Isaiah 25, reading verse 9 now. And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God for whom we have waited that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we've waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Amen. For those who wait on me will not regret. Just now we're going to find that. For those For those who wait on me will not regret or will not be something. We're going to find it. For those who... Here we go. Psalms 25, 3. Reading from verse 2 to 4. Oh my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be ashamed. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none of those who wait for you will be ashamed. 
Those who deal treacherously without cause will be ashamed. Make me know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your path. Thank you, Father. You know what we're looking for? Or many will say to you, let us go with you, for the Lord is with you. Okay, that's Zechariah. Zechariah 8, reading from verse 22 to verse 24, or 23. There's only 23 verses. So many peoples and mighty nations will come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and entreat the favor of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, ten men from all the nations will grasp the garment of a Jew, saying, let us go with you. For we've heard that the Lord God is with you. Praise to heaven, hear my heart surrendered. Tell my soul again, you are Lord of all. Father, now we're reading Revelations 3. We're reading out verse from 9 to 10. Look at those who belong to the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, but are liars instead. I will make them come and bow down at your feet, and they will know I love you. Because you've kept my command to endure patience, I'll also keep you from the hour of testing that is about to come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Father. I hear to comfort those who mourn. Yeah. I lift my hands to heaven. Hear my heart. You are Lord of all. Father, though the seas are raging, you will speak in them. Isaiah, Isaiah 61. Reading from verse 1. I will trust in only you to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, the favorable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland of praise, a garland of, a garland, beauty for ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting, so they will be called oaks of righteousness, planted like by living water. Amen, trees by living water. Planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified, an everlasting tree. Then they will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairs of the breach, and they will raise up the former devastations, and they will repair the ruined cities and the desolations of many generations okay place is getting kind of quiet now <coughs> I'm choking on what mm. okay hallelujah more than I can comprehend Lift my hands to heaven Hear my heart surrender I tell my soul again You are Lord of all And though the seas are raging You will speak and tame them Father, I hear him saying, the presence of the Lord, um, the joy of the Lord, sorry. The presence of, in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. You will speak in them. Jesus. Oh, you're so worthy, Father.
Reading Deuteronomy 12, verse 6 on to 8. And then it says, There, the hap okay. there you shall bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes, the contribution of your hand, your votive offerings, your free will offerings, the firstborn of your herd and your flock, and there also your household shall eat before the Lord your God and rejoice in all your undertakings which the Lord God has blessed you. You shall not do, you shall not do at all what we are doing here today every man doing whatever is right in his own eyes I, I hear him say something about Satan Satan will no longer This is the end of the book, amen? Where is it? Satan will be no more. Satan is no longer. Oh, there we go. There we go. When the prince of this world is destroyed, okay? And then the prince... Death is the final enemy that will be swallowed up. This prince of this world is destroyed. Death will be all right. So we have two things here to read. Mom, something bit me by my eye. When? Well, now the Prince of the World will be cast out is in John 16, but I'm looking for the Prince of this World is destroyed once and for all. In response, Jesus said, this voice was not for my benefit but yours. Now judgment is upon this world. Now the Prince of this World will be cast out. And I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto myself. So all who are walking in hopelessness can now see a light. All who um, all can walk in hope. All who are in darkness can now see a light. All those who are sick and now healthy. All those who are sorrowful now have joy. Rejoice, rejoice. Amen. It's all about being happy. But I'm looking for something in particular. First Corinthians 15, 54. There we go. 1 Corinthians 53, reading verse 53 to 55. For the perishable must be clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come to pass. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where is your death? Where, O oh death? Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? I hear him saying the lion and the lamb. Isaiah 11, reading from verse 5 to 7. Also righteousness will be the belt about his loins and faithfulness, the belt about his waist. The wolf will dwell with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the young goat. 
and the calf with the then the young lion and the fatling together and the little boy would lead them and also the cow and the bear will graze their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox father he's giving that promise the nursing child will play by the hole of the cobra hi sister marianne a little bit tired but going blessed in the lord pushing forward hopeful standing in faith the 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 nursing child will play by the hole of the cobra how are you and the wean child will put his hand on the viper's den a viper i don't like snakes I just don't so God is giving the promise that nothing's gonna harm any everything's gonna be in peace they will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth will be filled with the full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea Wow and then in that day the nations will resort to the roots of Jesse who will stand as a signal for the people and his resting place will be glorious will now be shaken then it will happen on that day that the Lord will again recover a second time with his hand the remnant of his people who will remain so God is gonna try he's he's so loving he's so he doesn't want anybody to perish like Abel will, he was waiting till the exact moment, the exact second that he can come, the exact second that he has to come. So that's a promise right there, you know. He's going to remove all the tears from us, all the death, all the sickness, all the sadness. Man, persecution will be no more because Satan and his angels will be no more. Um, those who follow him will be wiped out um, it's gonna be a happy time good times that's what we're pressing forward it might seem tedious it might might seem like it's just stretching on and on it might seem like a long time but it's not very long from now and it's gonna be a thousand years man can't wait can you um, let's go on to the other scripture. Where's my Facebook page? Okay. A lamp unto my feet. In the latter days or the times, you will surely understand it. Oh, your word will not be shared. Will never fail me like a fire in my bones. In the latter, what the rapture? The rapture I think I know according to the word and according to Abba we're going through the first part of the tribulation but there's gonna be a rapture there's gonna be a rapture um, somewhere in between but it's gonna some are gonna face death it's gonna come down to a life and death and those who are willing to give their lives like those who God God knows in their hearts are willing to sincerely give their lives for him for the testimony and for the 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 um for who he is he's gonna take in the rapture um the latter days will understand hmm they're preaching peace you know so that people think oh well before the great trip we don't really have anything to do business as usual and once we live in between um it's gonna be fine with God. No, God knows the heart and He knows the mind. 
Where's Stefan go? Did he go? In the latter days, you will understand it. Behold, Jeremiah, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 23. Yep, that is it. It's the hour. That's what Jesus said. Stay awake one hour. Just one hour. The hour of testing that's about to come on the earth. Behold, the storm of the Lord has gone forth in wrath. In wrath. In wrath. <laughs> Even the whirling tempest. It will swirl down on the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has performed and carried out the purposes of his heart in the last days you will clearly understand it i did not send these prophets but they ran i did not speak to them but they prophesied false prophets arise not good not good if i then you will know a prophet is among you. Let's see that. Then you know a prophet. Okay, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 2, 5. And then Ezekiel 33, 33, alignment. Stefan, did you did you leave? Ezekiel two, reading from verse four to six. I'm sending you to them, who are stubborn and obstinate children, and you shall say to them, "Thus says the Lord God." As for them, whether they can I take this off? I can. Can I? Okay, good. I'm sending you to them who are stubborn and obstinate children, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, as for them, whether they listen or not, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, neither fear them or fear their words, though thistles and thorns are with you, and you sit on scorpions neither fear their words nor be dismayed at their presence for they are a rebellious house and Ezekiel what's the thing we're looking at I forgot I forgot the scripture we're looking at I'll go back just now okay Ezekiel oh in the last days you shall surely understand in Ezekiel Ezekiel 33, reading from verse 32 to 34. Here's what he says. He talks about the prophets of peace. I'm about to speak about it, Sister Mary. Listen. Ezekiel 33, reading from 32 to 34. Well, just 33. There's no 34. Behold, you are to them like a sensual song by one who has a beautiful voice and plays well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do not practice them. So when it comes to pass, and it surely will, then they will know a prophet has been in their midst. In Jeremiah 28, reading from verse 8, and it says, The prophets who were before me, and before you from ancient times prophesied against many lands and against great kingdoms of war and calamity and pestilence. The prophet who prophesies of peace and when the word of the prophet comes to pass, then that prophet will be known as the one whom the Lord has truly sent. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from the neck of Jeremiah the prophet and broke it. There's nothing more I want. Dira kamara kashandara rababa handa shirdeya. Oh Jesus, Father God.
Where are your prophets who prophesied? Jeremiah 37, reading verse 19. Where are your prophets who prophesied to you? The king of Babylon will not come against you or this land. Where are they who prophesied peace? That is something we do not want. Amen? We do not want... Um, we don't want to be hoping for peace. And guess what comes? Persecution. Destruction. We want to be relying on Christ Jesus because He is our peace. Amen? He is our peace. said, I come to give you peace, not as the world gives, but I give. Deuteronomy 18.21 talks about another thing about prophets. You, say, you may say in your heart, how will we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come about or is not true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously and you shall not be afraid of him there are good prophets and bad prophets okay what was I saying just now oh I give you peace not as the world gives but I give um It's like biting into a lemon with a tiny sprinkle of sugar. Thank you, Father. I guess I'm going to pack up and leave in a while because Stefan seems to have gone. But John 14, reading from verse 26 to 28, 29. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, now we confirm who Jesus is. Holy Spirit. Amen. We, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Didn't Jesus say, I am the Advocate? There is no mediator between God and man but, um, but Jesus. Okay, listen. Ah. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've told you. And he said, when the end is coming near, these signs shall be. And they shall say, there's the Christ. Go find him. Or there's the Christ. Go meet him. Do not go when they say there's the Christ. Because Jesus said, he's not coming as a secret. He's coming back in a manner. Everybody's going to see him. And he said in verse 27, peace I leave with you. And my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. You heard me say I'm going away. And I am coming back to you. If you love me, if you loved me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father. Because the Father is greater than I. Hallelujah. So he's leaving the flesh and he's going back as spirit. There are so many things he can do greater as where he is on the throne is God than where he was here even though he had the permission to do the son does not do anything unless he sees the father doing um, you know what I mean people respect They're, they didn't esteem him when he came down in the flesh but they esteem God amen so the father is greater than I you gotta always come to that place where you say God is greater amen even if we are being led by his spirit god is greater and then greater is he inside of us than he who is outside of the who is outside of us who is in the world that's what i meant to say okay um in the latter days you will surely understand it i hear behold i'm doing a new good a new thing I'm doing a new thing. Isaiah 43, reading from verse 18 to 20. Do not call to the mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? 
I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the deserts. The beast of the field will glorify me, and the jackals and the ostriches. I'm leaving in a while, yeah. Because, oh, you're leaving? Because I've given waters in the wilderness and, the, and rivers in the desert to drink. And gi to give drink to my chosen people everywhere. Have a blessed one, Sister Mary. God bless you. Love you. Jesus loves you. Okay. Because I have given waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. So where God's people are going to go. Remember he said when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the most holy place. Do not go down. Let him who's on the housetop do not go down to get his cloak or anything in his house. But run for the... What we run into? Um, the mountains. Whenever we go, when we're going there, wherever we're going, or wherever Israel's going, wherever the people of God are going, um, God has provided for them. Amen. Didn't didn't He bring water out of the rock? Didn't He feed them in the wilderness? God says, "I will make it happen. I will surely make it happen." Okay. Um. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to, I think I'm going to cut off here and I'm going to leave. And we can um, continue at home. Yeah, because I really, um, I don't want to be up here alone by myself. No, I'm scared. I just don't want to hurt anybody because I will hurt somebody if they come around me. And that is a promise. Uh um, He said, in the latter days, you will surely understand it. Why does he say in the latter days, you will surely understand it? He said, do not worry. What you should eat or drink or what you should wear or where you should sleep. For I clothe the valleys and the birds and I see about the trees and everything else. The son of man has no place to lay his head. But which... Which father will give us his son a stone who asks for bread and a scorpion who asks for a fish? God says, not me. He said, I desire every good thing for you. And I'm going to give you every good thing. Okay? Um, that's why he said, in the latter days, we will surely understand. Why now? Why in the latter days? Because now we're tested. Now, it's to see who's walking on faith. Who's going to step out? Who's going to rely on God? Who's going to say, okay, I need to leave. I need to say, I, I, um, he's telling me to leave and I need to go and you need to go. But sometimes you don't even know where you're going or what you're going to. But God says he'll surely be with you. And he'll make a way where there is no way. Because he is the way. Amen. <sighs> In Isaiah 43, reading from verse 16 to 19. Wait, the before and after factor must come in. And this might be the last one that I'm reading in here. Um, let me just get a little bit. If David was here with me, I would have stayed longer. I mean, but pff, I told you, I'm just here alone, okay? So it's me and Jesus. So we see Isaiah 43, 15. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus said the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall, the army and the power, they shall lie down together. My eyes are getting red now. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as Tau. What is Tau? Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, and it will spring forth. Shall ye not know it? 
I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers and the deserts. I will make a way where there seems to be no way. Because I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one shall come unto eternal life but by through me. No one will come unto the Father but through me. Um. All right, beloved. I'm cutting off here. One more. I am the way, truth, and the life. In John 14, reading from verse 5 to 7. John 14, 5 to 7. Are you ready? And it says, mm, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we do not we do not know where are you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, you would know my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip, I've been with you so long. How have you not known me? Ah, no longer will they say know him to each neighbor, for every one of them will know him. It's coming, it's coming. Amen? Okay, beloved, I'm stopping here, and then when I go home, we'll do some more, right? In Jesus' name, Jesus loves you. I love you. I hope you took the scriptures in. I hope it it fed you in some way. It sure fed me. Um, and I'll see you soon. God's prayer life. Amen and amen.